What's going on guys? Welcome back to the DX Camera Show. I'm Mike aka Operation DX and are you guys ready for the third episode of the potato phase? Sorry, I just can't get that comment out of my head. Uh, I believe it was on the first video someone made a comment uh, about this being the potato phase. Anyways, there has been some uh, banter back and forth in uh, some of my videos about uh, abandoning contracts and losing stuff and whatever. It seems like it's procedural, so I'm going to go ahead and dump one of the contracts that I think that I'll never do, which is a uh, using a solid rocket booster to uh, go on an exit trajectory of Kerbin. I don't think I'll ever do that. I've never done that in this game before, so... Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and just pick up a couple. Uh, when I dumped one of the contracts, I got a contract that uh, is... I'm surprised it's a one-star rating. It says uh, just fly by the moon. Um, that's no problem. So we're just going to do something somewhat similar to what we've been building before. I'm just going to strap on a couple of medium-sized tanks with the LV-909. Now, something <clears throat> I noticed about the LV-909 in this new version is they had cut back the uh, impulse a little bit. I hadn't noticed this, this before because I'm like, man... I remember I used to get a little more real estate out of those engines, but uh, something doesn't quite seem right because usually you could build like a relatively small rocket and use the LV-909 to get you not only to the moon, but you can land in the moon, take back off and get back to Kerman with fuel to spare. Um, it looks like they cut out about 15 ISP out of the engine. I believe it used to be 360 and now it is 345. Sorry if I'm boring you, but uh, this definitely matters. It makes a difference. It makes the game a little bit harder. So when I actually get my mission to go land on the moon, I'm going to be have to, I'm going to have to be mindful of that and create a little more powerful rocket. Okay, so one of the uh, other contracts was to use the uh, Thumper solid rocket boosters off the launch pad. So that's essentially what this rocket is going to be for. So get uh, in the orbit of the moon and um, use these engines and essentially uh, that will fulfill the contracts that I essentially just picked up. And then of course we still have that other ship in orbit that I need to deorbit. Um, that was uh, the contract that just was orbit carbon. So I'm trying to get through some of this stuff quickly. I'm trying to be somewhat efficient. Uh, I don't know. Doing my best here guys. We'll, we'll see how it all works out. And geez, you know, I just can't seem to get these aerodynamic fins on symmetrically for the life of me. I keep tinkering around with this and they just don't look right to me. But anyways, question for you guys in the comments. So back when I did career mode in uh, point two two, I pretty much used this similar format. I would build my entire design, my rocket design, so you guys could see how I do everything. And then when we get to the launch phase and maneuver node phase, I would usually speed that part up pretty significantly. I would, of course, slow down the important stuff so you can see how I'm doing certain things. But this seems to be the best format because it allows me to save a lot of time in these videos. Uh, back in the day, like I said uh, in the first episode, my episodes used to be like 45 minute long. 40, 40, 40, 45 minutes long and uh, I think that's just I don't know I don't like to do those long uh, videos anymore so I try to keep these within the like I said 15 minute range I hope you guys are okay with that anyway as usual I ramble on there but uh, yes my question to you guys is do you like this format is this time frame cool with you guys do you like this length of episode and all that good stuff go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments most of you guys are like do whatever you want dx and uh that's just fine and good and all uh i'll pretty much continue doing what i'm doing and of course when i got to the more complicated builds in the later stages of career mode i kind of sped those up a little bit but i don't know i can i can slow that down it's just going to make the episode length um a little bit longer or less stuff is going to be shown i like to show a lot of stuff in the episode so for example right now we have uh, a second craft going up into orbit, one needs to deorbit, and then I think I'm gonna actually pick up a couple of contracts right after this. Anyway, here, you kinda see what I'm talking about with the LV-909, I've almost burnt through more than half of my fuel there, and I still have to do my ejection burn to get to the moon, 
And uh, there's no way I would be able to build a similar craft in order to uh, land on the moon and get back home. And if I did, it would be just so close of like not having enough fuel. So I'm going to have to rethink the basic design. But essentially, last time, I would probably be able to just use the same design. I would probably sub out the uh, Thumper solid engine boosters for some liquid uh, engine boosters. Probably put an LVT-45 in the middle, LVT-30s on the sides, and do something like that. But I'm probably going to have to add a third stage. But anyways, if you missed it, I picked up another two contracts. And these contracts essentially are to ferry some Kerbals into a suborbital flight and bring them back safely. However, we haven't unlocked any of the passenger compartments. And these would essentially probably expire before I was able to unlock those things. But I figured, eh, this is an easy 26,000 credits or whatever. As long as I made a relatively cheap rocket and I get some money back and get some fame. And I don't know if I can play with that fame to get a little extra money and all that good stuff. So this is pretty much just a simple rocket. Hopefully this will work. Probably going to have to add a little uh, more, a couple parachutes on this guy to make sure that it doesn't, um, nobody crashes to their doom. Um, but this one's, again, pretty simple to fulfill a couple of contracts. I could probably, <laughs> there's actually another contract in there with like two more Kerbals that need to be ferried. It's like almost the exact same thing. So on those kind of contracts, what I might do is show like a quick glimpse of, hey, I built this same rocket, I'm going to launch these guys up and uh, bring them back down safely. Unless something disastrous happens, of course, I'll show that. But uh, some of that kind of stuff, I might just say that I, like, I'll show like a couple of clips, but I'll, I'll just edit that out, that kind of thing. So you don't have to watch me do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Um, hopefully some of the bigger stuff, you know, getting to the other planets and stuff is the more interesting stuff. Um, landing some rovers kind of looking forward to that and then of course they added a mining system which i can't wait to get to but that's so late down the tech tree that uh it's gonna be a while till i get to that stuff um, i can't wait till i get my lab so i can just start generating science that is uh, definitely a helpful thing but in the potato phase <laughs> i still can't get that out of my head all right so we're gonna launch these guys up into orbit and this time around um, both of my pilots are in orbit, so, oops, I actually forgot to put my, um, passengers on board. Uh, it's a good thing that I didn't put this on too hardcore of a mode, or I wouldn't have been able to go back and do this. Alright, so, loaded my passengers up, and once again, uh, Bill, is Bill running the show here? Bill, Bill, Bill. He is indeed, and this is going to make this flight a little more interesting because I can't use SAS, so I have to really stay on top of it. You, you already noticed that I'm like slipping all over the nav ball. Uh, of course, I'm going to speed this up, and I also forgot to put aerodynamic fins, so there's a good chance this rocket could do a couple of flips. Typically, they would do a flip if uh, you don't stay on top of the nav ball. I'm um, usually pretty good. I'm just using the keyboard, though, so... Uh, you can see that I almost did a flip there. I'm, I'm staying on top of it. Had to get to about a certain speed. I saved a little bit of Delta V for the way back down because for some reason I decided to not put a heat shield on this particular craft. I don't know why I did that. I just built it real quick. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, save the Delta V. So when I come back down, it's going to get a little bit crispy toasty, but uh, I'll be able to burn off some of that speed. And hopefully these guys will land safely somewhere near the launch center, uh, not towards that mountain. Uh, I was considering actually doing kind of a retrograde thing, but uh, I always worry I'm going to like crash into that mountain. So here we go. Fire into my rockets. Got extra parachutes here. No problem. Getting really close to the launch center. And this is just a nice, quick, easy 26,000 minus the rocket parts plus whatever I save here. So uh, I think it's an easy, easy flight. And I think I get like 20 or 40 fame for doing this. It's an easy little perfect flight here. So bam, landed down safely. Good stuff. All right, go ahead and recover this craft. And I did fulfill everything I needed to do. 
Uh, I think if I just launch them, I get like 6,000. Um, I don't know if I get anything if I, if I kill anybody. Fortunately, I have not uh, killed any Kerbals yet. Um, <laughs> but again, it may come. I, I don't want to edit that stuff out too. Like if I mess up, I want to like spectacularly mess up and I want to keep all that stuff. So definitely want to show that. It makes things more interesting anyways. All right. So, okay. That was my thumper contract. So all of that is fulfilled. So I'm going to go back up into orbit here and wow, I guess I haven't used this screen yet. Hmm. Anyways, uh, we got a couple of things that are going to be going on in the relatively same time frame. So we got the guy that needs to deorbit near the launch center, and we need to got this guy who actually needs to go off into an escape trajectory to the moon. So we're going to start with him and speed up time and get his, uh, his maneuver node set up. So this is why I bought that stuff early in the launch center. Um, I did put myself um, really low on funds early on, but just having the ability to place down the maneuver nodes makes things so much easier. So you got a pretty close orbit there. Looks like a pretty good place to burn. Uh, usually I have to do a correction burn because the, uh, the conics go wack. They just go wonky on me for some reason every freaking time, even if I burn absolutely perfect. So <clears throat> here we go. Burning towards the moon and... Yeah, it's just like I'm getting a better picture of what may be possible if I could possibly use this same exact rocket setup to land on the moon, including some science packages and uh, an antenna array and all that stuff. We'll see how that goes. And finally, to wrap up this episode, we're just simply going to deorbit the uh, craft that had the contract to just get into orbit around Kerbin. And so I'm pretty much just chewing up the rest of my LV-909 fuel just to get as close as I can to the launch center. I knew I wasn't going to be able to because the timetables between those two craft was a little too tight. So it uh, it's not too bad. I think that as long as you get somewhat close to the launch center, there's no big penalties. But there's one of the buildings I know you have to upgrade in order to uh, be able to grab anything around the entire globe without incurring some sort of penalty. So I think we're close enough to the launch center to not have anything that's uh, too big of a deal. Anyway, I don't think we collected a ton of science in this mission. Uh, we just got like some hundred thousand of funds, which will be helpful. Uh, I think the next thing I want to upgrade is the uh, VAB that will allow us to build craft with more parts. We'll especially need that if we have to uh, build something a little more elaborate to get to the moon. But there we go, recovered some parts, some science, nothing too spectacular. And that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.